All right, what we are looking at here is a 1993 Johnson 40 horsepower outboard. It was on my pontoon boat, and it is still the engine I plan on using for the pontoon boat, but it has some issues. Uh, one of them, at least the one I plan on tackling in this video, is the fuel system. It still has the VRO pump on it, and somebody has blocked it off, or bypassed it, because it'll still pump fuel and run with this bypassed, even though it's not sucking oil. You just pre-mix the gas and engine's fine. But I don't want anything to do with that VRO system, so my plan is to completely remove it and install a fuel pump. So hopefully we will be able to tackle that in this video. Now, there may not be anything wrong with this actual fuel system. The VRO pump may function just fine. It may have an um, air leak in one of the fuel fittings. It may have an air leak in one of the fuel lines or just a, you know, a hose leaking somewhere. Don't really care what, because again, I plan on replacing it all anyway. So, let's dig in. Now, usually I would just fight around here, but I don't really want to have to kind of get my hands in places. So I'm going to remove the lower cowling, make it life easy on me. There should have been a screw in here, but it's missing, so I'll have to replace that. But otherwise, there's two down inside of the black abyss here, and then one more in the front. All right, with those out of the way, you can kind of see what's going on here now. But let's go ahead and remove the starter. So what happens, fuel enters this line, gets filtered out, goes into the VRO pump, which then should have had a oil line coming here, going in to right here. Oil and fuel mixes, gets dispensed into the fuel manifold here, two lines go to the carburetor, one guy goes to the primer solenoid, and then from the primer solenoid, two more come back and go to the carburetor. So what we gotta do is basically remove everything. Um, Front cover, that's, uh, yeah, we'll explain more of that later. Let's get these fuel lines off for now. All right, I'm gonna get the front cover off now. It's held in with a series of 5 16th bolts all the way around it. <laughs> and in this one, there's also a stud in the middle, so no big deal there. Let's pull that out too. Now we can remove the 5 16 screws, top and bottom, holding in the back plate. And there is our VRO pump and our air cover. So what you're looking at here is a 90 rope start, 40 horse. Being a rope start doesn't have electronics in it, or at least didn't at the time, it does now. So that's why you have a fuel pump, but you also have a different air intake uh, silencer thing. It doesn't have the provisions for the VRO on it, it's a completely different silencer altogether. It's nice because you have more room to get cables inside of here, more room to work on stuff, and it generally is less cluttered than the uh, VRO version of it. You can buy these new. They are pretty expensive. I think it's 200 bucks for the base and the cover, which is kind of a lot of money. Luckily, not many people care enough to put a little bit more money into their outboard to buy this cover. So you can usually find them cheaper used on eBay because, again, not many people know or really care about this cover. So here is the used one I picked up off eBay. It's a little on the dirty side, but overall it's really not that bad. So I'll just uh, give it a wipe down real quick and get it ready to go back on. All right, here are the parts I got for this. One is a fuel pump. Yeah. Second one is a bracket. 
and this is kind of a not needed part but it's like nine bucks so why not see how our VRO setup has two fuel lines going through it this guy only has one so that's another difference in the uh, fuel pump version of these motors I have fuel line fuel line I got some uh, that's not fuel line that's mission wire don't know why that's in there that's my fuel line while I was at it I went ahead and picked up some fuel line and here is some more fuel line and uh, some hose clamps uh, for the fuel line and then just another small piece of fuel line why so much fuel line you ask yeah I don't actually know I think I uh, mixed my two orders for my other motor up with this one I got no idea anyway new gasket for the carburetor uh, silencer and then the silencer cover gasket but I don't think I'm going to use this I'm going to save it in case I do because someday those carburetors are going to get cleaned one's on there right now is okay so I'll just save it with that I also picked up I don't really pick up more like collecting this little bag fuel pump mounting screws fuel pump gasket this is a new full fitting gonna need one of those I uh, don't know why that screws in there, and the important part is this little plug. Also this thing too. I'll show you this in a bit. Alright, the difference, one of them anyway, with the VRO versus non-VRO, first is this little fitting. Let me look up what that's called. Well, first things first, I suppose, let's go ahead and remove this. Do we need or want it there? So... I don't really think you need to completely remove this. I'm pretty sure you can get a vacuum cap, put it over there, and call it a day. But since I have the pipe plug, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And that's all it really is. This is actually an Evinard one, but, you know, I'm sure a normal pipe plug would work. It's coated in some Teflon. I'm going to leave that on there. I'm also going to add some gasket sealant M to the threads just to kind of make sure, you know what I mean? And we install into our hole. Now the fuel pump motors don't have this uh, little hose retaining clip on it. So let's go ahead and take that off. <coughs> now, here's some advice. If you have any rust on your bolt heads at all, anywhere, I don't think I would mess with this screw. I, you don't want to risk breaking it. I would just leave the thing in there. Or, if you really care, bend this back and forth until you take it off. But you don't want to risk breaking that hole. Let's go ahead and pull out our plug here. <coughs> Pretty easy to do. And that's where our pulse pressure is going to be coming in for the fuel pump. I'm just going to put in my donor pump here. Well, no time like the present to change out the fuel lines. They always do this. Any old motor I get. Always figured it's a good idea. Alright, this is the Evan Rude 530 seconds fuel line. Fuel hose 530 seconds. Gotta measure our old one as best we can. Square off the end. And install it back onto our carburetor. Then I'll do the top. Now we need to do the primer solenoid hoses <coughs> to get those off. <coughs> Just remove the primer solenoid, make your life easy. Good luck doing it without it. To remove the little hoses, 
put a little slit in them, open them up. That way you don't pull the fitting out of the top of the carburetor. So it's especially important when you do that to our primer here. Now, this I noticed as I took it off, we have a cracked fitting, so that's a problem. We have to fix that. Do that at a later date. These little tiny plastic fittings are pretty fragile. So, do yourself a favor. Be extremely careful when you remove these. If you break the little ones, it's not a big deal. Especially if this is already broken like mine is, because then it's, you know, less than 20 bucks to get it fixed. At least I think that's what it is. A little rebuild kit for the plunger end. It's pretty inexpensive, but not the case for the big end here. It is part of the entire assembly. If you break that, you're paying 100 bucks for a new one. That's where you want to be careful. Hose is the same for this, so it'll slide right back on. Just good measure it out. Put one of our special fuel line hose clamps on here. Good enough. Now our eighth inch hose. It's our primer line. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of slip some on. And the other end of the hose, slip it on. It actually looked way too long, so the plan is to trim them while on the motor. The original lines, I mean, they looked way too long. Alright, that in there, you can just kind of fish where about you want it, so I'll cut it there, the bottom, I'll just cut that right back. here. Alright, set for the primer. Alright. Continuing right along here, I have a little pack of zip ties. There's the part number in case you need it. These are special little zip ties that have a little uh, round to them. Made for zip tying on carburetors. Well, fuel lines rather, but you know what I mean. So we just put these on wherever it's comfortable. Now if you have one of those little zip tie installer guns, now would be the time to use it. I have one and I have no idea where it's at, so I'll just be using the old pull as hard as I can approach. Which usually works fine. I'll just make access a little easier. I'm going to pop off this fuel line. Sorry, battery line, whatever you want to call it. Battery cable. That's what's called. Alright, now I'm going to slap the cover back on. It's going to be sitting there, but 
This will give me an idea of where everything needs to go. Okay, now is as good as time as any to assemble our fuel bracket here. It's a little rubber. It's long deteriorated, but it doesn't really do much anyway, so it'll work fine. Alright, fuel fitting is on. So what's going to happen is the fuel line is going to come out of here. It's going to go under the mount bracket right here, come up and go into our uh, pump. And then it's going to go in through the pump, come out the brass fitting, go back, I believe, under the bracket again, come up to our fuel manifold. This is going to be a 5 16 fuel line. Going to run it, like I said, under the bracket, into the pump. We'll give it a little bit of a playroom, if you will. And we'll cut it right about here. I'm just going to put it on there for now. Off of our pump. Back under the bracket. Find the manifold, wherever it pulled off to. Okay, manifold is in hand. Probably going to go about halfway with it. So I'll cut it where my hand is. Store our manifold back onto our hose. And that's it, is about where we line up. So I'll put a zip tie on it. Feels like that's about as good as it's getting. And looking at it, I can tell you they're a little too long. It's going to put it way out here by the cover. Uh, that may have been true if a huge VRO pump was right here. We don't have that anymore, obviously. That's why you're watching this video. So we we're going to trim a few more inches off of this line to kind of have it naturally flow about there. Top carburetor. Still there. The middle one we'll use for the choke. Won't take very much off, maybe an inch. I call it a choke, but it's a, it's a primer. Primer solenoid. And the bottom, probably about an inch. I'd say that looks good. No kinks, because you know you don't want a folded hose because you have fuel problems. So with no kinks, looking halfway decent. Get my zip ties ready. So it's going to be right outside the uh, bracket, which is fine. Or the uh, silencer. That, that should work fine. Base gasket out. There's the part number, in case you're wondering. 
get a couple of screws to kind of hold it in for me. Use the two that are easiest to get to. Enter those. And then slip her back onto the carburetor. Get my socket driver ready. That's gone. Alright, the original air silencer came with a stud instead of another screw. So I went and hunted down a spare screw. So all six of them will have screws now. And go ahead and put them in the front. Tighten it down nice and snug. Now this is a little vent or drain. So if this gets full of gas, it vents back into here and goes back into the crankcase. I was missing that originally. No big deal, so I'm going to add it back in. I'm reusing this hose since it doesn't truly do much except for drain. I'm not too worried about its quality or if it's going to deteriorate because I'm sure it'll be fine, even if it does. Trim it down to about length. As to not have any kinks or hardcore bends. And that looks perfect. And we don't need zip ties here, but might as well put some on. And now for the front air silencer. I guess you'd call it a cover, but whatever it's called. And by the way, I cleaned all of these, these parts before I put them on. The inside had some you know, tree branches and dust and when it was in there. It does not anymore. So I don't like how that's kind of angled. I'm going to do a straighter cut on it. It probably doesn't matter, but it just didn't look very good. Yeah, now I have a full bit of that. Now, if at all possible, rotate these clamps so you don't see them. Reason being, now when you run your hand in there, you're not going to cut your hand on them. Just reinstall the starter. And that is basically how to remove your VRO and install a fuel pump. Now you didn't truly need to the expense of the you know, little fuel adapter and the fuel fitting here. You could have got away with using the old stuff. The same with the rope start cover. You didn't really need that either. But if you if you look around used on eBay, you know you can get them sometimes pretty cheaply. And I think it personally gives you more room to get wiring and stuff inside of here. Because if you look now, now we can actually get inside of there instead of, you know, this being blocked off. Now, will it give you any performance gain or horsepower gain? Absolutely not. However, it does look a little better. The power of suggestion tells us if it looks better, it's going to run better. Well, everybody, hope you found this video helpful. I'll try to put links to the stuff I used below. Sometimes I forget and lose the part numbers and it's just a nightmare. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll give it my shot. I still got some more stuff to this motor. I'm going to take these covers back off, drop the lower unit, and do the water pump, and then I got to do the power trim and tilt unit reseal. It's leaking everywhere. So that's going to, that's going to be costly. But, oh well. It's all part of the game. As long as you have these covers off, you might as well clean the inside and the base of the motor and everything the best you can. You can get into the steering arm and 
you can get it get these things looking pretty pretty nice with those covers removed questions or comments let me know below and i'll see y'all next video